Hi there, it's Chester at Blue Pecan Computer Training. Uh, in this video, I want to look at using checkboxes. So I've got a little database here or a table of invoices, and you can see that the overdue ones, today's date is the 22nd of September 2020. You can see that the overdue ones are shown in red and ones that aren't due are in black. Now, if I just go through here and I mark this as paid, you can see that it's no longer red. And in fact, I get a gray background. I'd get that on a non overdue invoice as well. But this is quite nice. So if it is overdue, you'll get rid of that horrible red text and mark the background as gray. And if it is an overdue and it's been paid, it will just mark it as with a gray background. So I want to look at how we achieve that, how we get these check boxes, how we apply this conditional formatting, etc. Okay, let's move on to the empty table or the table that I haven't applied all these little features to. And the first thing to do is to get some checkboxes on our spreadsheet. So how do we do that? Well, you're gonna to need to show the developer tab on your ribbon. And by default, it doesn't show. So to get that, you just right click somewhere on your ribbon and customize it. And then you need to tick this little tick box here. That'll show the developer tab. Then within the developer tab, you have an insert menu on the controls group. You've got form controls and ActiveX controls. We're using form controls here, and there's your checkbox. So you click on it, and then you click somewhere in the first cell. This checkbox text we don't need, so we can just delete that. Don't need it. And what you've got to do is you've got to fit this whole thing within the cell. And when I say the whole thing, I mean plus this kind of border with handles on it. That's all got to fit within the cell. And you'll see that's quite important in a minute. So I'm going to drag it into the cell and I want to make sure that the kind of border around it fits comfortably in that cell. I don't want it going over the cell border into the cell above or the cell below. Now, once I've got that uh, checkbox in that cell, I can just fill the cell down just like I, just as if I was filling a formula, I can fill it down. And it will replicate that checkbox. And then you'll see that if I click on it, I get a tick. If I click on it again, it takes it off. So I got the tick box. But the ticks are not in any way uh, reacting to, uh, well, not reacting to, they're not leaving a value in the cell that we can then do something with. Essentially, we want this tick to return true in the cell if it's if it's ticked. So we want the checkbox to return true in the cell if it's ticked and false if it's not ticked. Now to do that, what I do is I right click on the control and I go to format control. And I'm on the control tab here. And you can see here that I've got a cell link box. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to click into the cell that the uh, checkbox is currently in, F3. So I click on OK. And then you'll see that if I tick it, it says true. And if I untick it, it says false. Now, if I copy that down, what you're hoping is, is that if I untick this, that this will say false, but it doesn't because it's still linked to F3. So you're now thinking, well, why don't you just take the dollars out, Chester, and then copy it down? Well, that's exactly what I thought. So if I go to Format Control, and what I'm going to do is press F4 on my keyboard, take the dollars out, click on OK, and then copy this down. So now if I tick on that, I'll say true. <laughs> if I tick here, that says false, that says true. That's because it's still linked to F3. So in a short list like this, you'll think to yourself, well, it's a bit tedious, but I can just go in and do F4 there. 
and right click again, F5 there. But we're all getting a bit bored of this. So look, these three work at the top. But these obviously still are not working. So if you had like a hundred rows with a hundred tick boxes, you're not really going to want to go through and manually uh, change the cell link for each of these checkboxes. So it's a bit disappointed that it doesn't copy down. And one of the ways around this would be to write a little uh, for uh, for each next loop. So what I'll do is I'll just show you a, it's a very short bit of code that you can use to basically loop through all these checkboxes and assign a cell link. I've got this all ready for you. I'm going to go to Visual Basic here. And I've created a module for myself. That's what you'll need to do. You need to create a module. And to do that, you just go Insert Module. I'll create a module for you. And then in this module, and I'll leave this on the uh, web page on my website so you can pick it up, there's a little bit of code here. So I've called it Assign Cell. And I'm declaring a variable here. I've called it C box, checkbox as checkbox. And then I'm going to say for each checkbox in the active sheet, the sheet we're in, and we're looking in the collection of checkboxes within this active sheet. For each of those checkbox, what I'm doing is I'm saying that the link cell property is equal to the checkboxes top left cell address. Now, let me just show you what that is, because that's a bit weird. If I go dot there, top left cell. So what it's doing is it's looking at, I'll just confirm that, the, if I right click on here, it's looking at not really the checkbox, but this kind of border with handles around it. It's looking where the top left edge is it's looking at what cell that is in. So if that extended up there, then the address of the top left of this checkbox would be F2, whereas I want it to be F3. I'll undo that. So you've got to make sure that that kind of thin border is within the correct cell. So let's go back to my Visual Basic editor and it's dot address. You can also do, if you don't want to do top left cell, You've also got bottom, bottom right cell. But we'll do top left cell. Okay, so the linked cell address will be equal to the address that the top left corner of our checkbox is in. And we're picking out that address property from there and then what it's going to do is it's going to just loop through each of the checkboxes retrieve that address and assign it to the link cell property of the checkbox so as i said i'll leave that on my website you can just copy it into your uh, spreadsheet so what i'm going to do now is i'm just going to play this up here play it and we'll see if it's worked i can close that down now so if i look down on these ones that i didn't change Go to Format Control. You can see it's now F9, which is the correct one, correct cell address. And I'll just check this one. Well, that's F10, so it's definitely worked. And if I just untick these, you can see they are in fact all going to full. So there we are. I mean, if you don't mind manually creating these linked cell addresses, that's fine. But that little bit of code would definitely help you over if you had many more rows. Now, what I don't want is the word true and false to actually appear in these cells. So I'm just going to change the, the font color here. Change it to white. Okay. So we've got the checkboxes and we've got the interactivity there. Um, now I want the checkbox to basically mark the invoices paid by showing a different color background. So how do I do this? Right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to select these cells here, the ones that need to be affected, and I'm going to go up to Conditional Formatting. So that's on the Home tab of my ribbon, Conditional Formatting. I'm going to go to New Rule, 
and I'm going to go to user formula to determine which cells to format. So basically I want to say that if this cell here, F3, is equal to true, then this row here gets a grey background or whatever colour background. Now, the conditional formatting is initially applied to the active cell, which at the moment is B3. But as it gets copied across, it'll be applied to other cells in that row. And then as, you cop as it's copied down, because notice I've selected across and down, it will, it will apply to uh, the different cells within this row. Now, what I've got to think about is where the, the condition, which cell the condition applies to, and it's always in column F. The true or false is always in column F. So what I need to do is just take that dollar out of, uh, <clears throat> what I need to do is just take the dollar out between F and three. I need to leave the dollar before the F, locking the F, because the condition is always in column F. Now, I could write, does F2, F3 equal true? But there's no need, because all you're doing is, you're being asked here, format cells where the formula is true. So, is F3 equal to true? So, equals F3 suffices. Then I can say, format, fill, and I'll choose a grey background colour. Click on OK. Click on OK. So let's see if this works. So if I tick this now, can you see? It's a subtle grey, but it is in fact formatting those cells. I think the grey is a bit too subtle. <laughs> so I'm going to change that conditional formatting, manage rules, edit rule, format. Let's go for a slightly darker grey. That stands out a little bit more, so you can see how that's actually working. Now, we also want the overdue invoices to appear with red text. So I'm going to select all those cells again, conditional formatting, new rule, use a formula. And there's going to be two things that need to be true here for it to be overdue. Uh, one, that the date due would need to be in the past. And the second is that the paid column would need to equal false. So for this, I can use an AND function. And I'm going to say in the first argument of the AND function is E3. Now, I only need to fix the E there because the date due is always in column E. Is it less than today? So if you haven't come across the today function before, it's, uh, it basically returns today's date and keeps that up to date. That's the first test, is the date due in the past. And then the second test is this not equal to true. <laughs> now, the way I can do that is just say not, and then this cell address, the opposite to true. And again, I'm fixing the F. So two closed brackets at the end. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, uh, you're going to have red text for that. Let's go for bold and red. Okay. So I click on OK. So now you can see that the ones that are overdue, so today's date, 22nd of September, 2nd of the 9th, 6th of the 9th, 27th of the 8th. And if I tick that, it takes the red off, puts the grey text behind it, uh, the grey <laughs> fill behind it, and so it would for a non-overdue invoice. Okay, so you can see that works quite nicely. That's all I want to cover in this video, uh, use of checkboxes. As I said, I'll put the little bit of code, uh, VBA code that I use there on my website, so you can copy and paste it into your uh, project, your Excel workbook. Uh, thanks very much for watching. Please subscribe if you have enjoyed it and found it useful. And I'll see you next video.